Sometimes I choose to use, if I'm on a concrete area, I will use an aluminium rail. But over this this building, I try and make it look a little bit more in keeping by using a concrete lintel. Okay. 65 by 100 by our ever long. 65 mil by 100 mil okay. by the length. Well, this turns out it's just under two meters. Right. So on that, break out the ground, put a nice straight saw cut across, break out the ground 150 mil deep. Okay. That'll give me just under a hundred mil bed on the lintel, which is even more structure um, to bed it onto, and then obviously at the rear. Yeah. So then just making sure that that's absolutely level. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. yeah. Then we know that the rails either side yeah. will be dead level, and that makes it much easier. Okay. So there's a lot less stress to be put onto bolts, allen keys and tightenings and fixings. Yeah, because we know it's dead level. Yeah. Well, we do, the, 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 do you have to do that in sympathy with the, with the walls so that you've got a nice Yeah, square, well we know nice that the walls are plumber check when oh, okay. they came out. Right. So we know that we're, we're where we need to be within a couple of mil tolerance right. on, on the sides. Yeah. This was previously checked when we came to um, measure all this so okay. it was something that we, we could account for if we needed to pack yeah. us so on and so forth yes yeah in case you wanted to say if the walls were quite square or yeah through the floor or something yeah. like that yeah okay so you've, that out. You've, then, you've then dug all this out yeah put that uh, we've set the uh, we've set the concrete concrete lintel on mortar yes extra strength right so we know that it's going to go off quite quick, but also it's really strong. Okay. So we know it's we know it's where it needs to be. Yeah. Okay. So you do that the day before, give you 24 hours to set. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you normally do? Yes. Okay. So now depending you on what strength of mortar you use. Right. And there's various different stuff on the market. Okay. Such as. Um, this quick chem cement, yeah. which you just add to sand. The more cement you add, the quicker it goes off. Okay. Um, this Instamac M60, which is a fast setting mortar. Okay. Depends how quick you want to put it in or how quick you want it to go off. Depends what you use. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. have you been in a situation where you can have to get this done in a day or, or, or many times? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what you choose. Yes. Particular type of to make it use. All depends on cost. I'm just putting the rail in the centre of the concrete strip that's been inserted in the ground to make sure it's central. Okay. Then I'll put my spirit level to it. I know that the wall's square, but I just need to make sure that the rail's upright and plumb. Yeah. How's that looking? Then I'll get my small drill bit and I will mark the holes that need to be drilled. Okay. You're always better off doing it with a drill bit. Because yeah. if you do it with a pen, you might, when you start to drill off of a pen mark, you might slip off the off of the mark. Oh. Is that, is that the right, is that the correct size drill or slightly smaller? This is slightly smaller. Right. Slightly smaller just so it goes through the holes on the rail. It's a four mil drill bit. Okay. Knowing that I've marked the holes, I then get my SDS drill, SDS bit. Yeah.
just have to drill it, you need to use the SDS if you SDS. If you're drilling into masonry, you need an SDS drill. Okay. And an SDS bit. Yeah. Yeah. So far we've had uh, we've had the rendering and now you're looking at masonry. Is there, is there any other types of scenarios you come across in a work engineer? Don't fix the timber, don't fix the precast. Okay. Um, although timber is used on boats, yeah. Um, generally people don't take take the time to maintain timber. Right, yeah. So yeah. There is doors. Yeah scenarios and floodgates but more to divert rather than to stop. Yeah. So as you say you need something that's pretty robust, strong, it's gonna be able to hold the uh, the rails up. Yeah. And the barriers. Yeah. yeah. So you just drop the raw plugs in there. Yeah, make sure that there's no dust on the floor. Yeah. And we'll just give the water wipe in a sec. Just take that excess dust. Okay. So what are you going to do next? I'm going to run a seal of bead along the screw line. Right. From the wall first. So we know that it's got a decent amount of sealant slash adhesive yeah. at the rear. So we know that when the rail's on the wall, although it's screwed, yeah. it's also stuck there as well. Yeah. So what size drill and wall plugs have you used then there? Six mil. Okay. Right. So what's that you're putting down? That's the neoprene pad at the bottom. Yeah. So you put lots of sealant down to be able to stick that down onto that. Uh yeah. Okay. Make sure the rail's clear at the back. Okay. Give it a quick wipe. Yeah. So I'll just say, what do you do to just line it up? Just line it up from the top. Yeah, start at the top, but just drop the screw in as so, a guide. Self, Self-reference really. Yeah. Whatever you feel comfortable with. I generally I two or three of the screws in and then impact driver. Yeah. Cover screws you're using there. Brass. Okay. This is brass. Do they count to sink? The rails are already. Count for something anyway. Okay. There you go. Looking good? Yeah. Okay. So what do you do next? You need a bead of sealant at the back. So the same sealant, you just run it all the way along the back. Yeah. In the corner. Yeah. 
So you've got the seal at the back, the seal in the middle, which yeah. you put down on the screws, and then the seal along the front. Yes. Okay. And across the top. Yeah. So you put the, uh, that, that seal at the bottom, the black piece, why would you do that? It just helps, the, once the board sits at the bottom of the rail and compresses, yeah. any moisture that might get through that just sort of sucks it. Oh. And it, doesn't, it doesn't then penetrate through, it's like a wetsuit. Oh is it, yeah. yeah. So, in, so in that corner, that's the most, one of the most vulnerable places. This is, is the most vulnerable point, at the front side of the rail. Yes. Rather than the back, because the rubber sits on the neoprene at the back. Yes. And there's a bit of sealant there as well, so it will make it any, it will make it hard for the water to. Right. Get through. So what are you doing there? Now I'm going to seal the front. Taking care that on the mortar joint, you will need a little bit more sealant. Okay. One, it tidies it up, and two, it helps again against the sealant. So you want an absolute watertight seal yep. all along that front face. So you're giving three. And the front face is, is the important one. Yes. Yeah. It's your first line of defense. So it's your first line and then your second is the middle. Yes. Where you put the screws in and then the last, the, the back there is just to make, make sure. Yeah. So is it, is it worth doing the back one or? Uh, it's always worth doing it. Yeah. Because obviously you're going to flip from the front. 